Hello. So, uh, in this class, we will discuss about a new term uh, that is electric potential. So far, we have discussed a lot about uh, uh, electric field and Coulomb's law, Gauss law, and application of Gauss law. Now we have to discuss about electric potential. <coughs> All of you must have been familiar with uh, electric potential in the previous class, uh, say in class 10. So the same thing will be a little bit uh, more extensive. <coughs> and uh, application area will get increases, uh, will get increased. And now uh, the electric potential always associated with a field, electric field, conservative field, in the same way as in case of gravitational field, gravitational potential. <clears throat> energy was associated with that one. So, uh, in order to understand it well, as you see that when you take an object of mass m from the surface of the earth to a certain height, <clears throat> then you do work against gravitational and when you take this object to certain height then this object now will have capacity to do work because when this object is now dropped from that much height uh, it will come down with increasing kinetic energy and decreasing potential energy <coughs> So, due to position or configuration, energy possessed by a charged body due to its position or configuration is called electric potential energy or simply potential energy. So, potential energy is a scalar aspect of that electric field. So, effect of charge <coughs> in a space can be expressed or realized in two ways. One in terms of vector field and another in terms of scalar field. Vector field is called electric field and a scalar field is called electric potential. So, <coughs> just uh, you take an object of mass m to a height edge, position of object gets changed from the center of the earth or from the surface of the earth. And as soon as position gets changed, uh, energy associated with that object will get changed. And now question is that from where this energy comes from? Uh, where this energy comes from. So, as you take the object to a height edge, you have to do work against the gravitational force. And that much work is stored as gravitational potential energy in that object. <coughs> Similar thing happens in case of electric charge, replace mass, and say, uh, if Earth is negatively charged, huge body, and now you have to take a positive charge uh, away from the surface of the Earth. Then, due to its negative charge, it will attract any positive charge. So, one cannot 
the positive charge cannot be itself able to move away from the surface of the earth because it experiences an attractive force. So one has to apply an external effort to move or to take away that positive charge near the surface of the earth. An amount of work done <coughs> in taking that positive charge uh, to a point where Earth's gravitational pull becomes zero is called potential energy, a potential of that object. So as, uh, as you know that electrical electric field extends up to infinity, so as Earth is negatively charged, as for example, we have uh, assumed that we are not discussing here uh, massive effect of the Earth, just we discussing about the uh, field due to charge. So, so when you take away a positive charge from the surface of the Earth or near the surface of the Earth, you have to do work. Now, question is that up to what distance we can take it away so that Earth's pool uh, becomes zero. So if you take it to infinity, then that charge body will not get attracted towards the surface of the Earth due to its negative charge. So uh, we take a reference point at infinity and then we define amount of work done in moving unit positive charge from infinity to certain point. <coughs> Similarly, if you fix a source charge, say capital Q, at a point in the space. And now another test charge, say Q, is uh, test charge is always taken to be positive. So capital Q, which is source charge, is fixed in the space. And uh, test charge Q0 is now brought closure to the source charge. So source charge will repel away the test charge Q0. And hence, one has to do work against a repulsive force. Uh, and uh, amount of work done against the repulsive force is just to hence, electrical potential energy in the test charge at that point. <coughs> so uh, a brief definition of uh, electrical potential is that the electric potential at any point in electric field is uh, defined as the amount of work done in moving unit positive charge from infinity to a certain point in the given field against the direction of electric field. So, uh, uh, let us assume that <coughs> if W is the work done in moving a test charge Q0 from infinity to a point, say P, in the field of source charge capital Q, then potential at that point will be given as V equal to W upon Q naught that you would have a studied in class 10 because as we define that amount of work done in moving unit positive charge from infinity to a certain point in the given field of the source charge. So here Q charge is brought from infinity to a point and amount of work done is W. Therefore work done per unit charge is equal to W over Q. And this work done for you charge is called potential and potential is denoted by P. Potential is a scalar quantity because Q0 is charge, point charge or test charge and W is work. So both of them are scalar quantities. So potential itself is a scalar quantity. Now electric potential can be negative or positive depending on which charge. So depending on sign of source charge. <coughs> now, uh, uh, so far we have uh, 
understood uh, potential. Now we have to learn about uh, uh, unit of potential uh, in which it is measured. So say here in given physical formula, potential V equal to W upon Q. So an SI unit of work is joule and SI unit of uh, Q naught that is electric charge is Coulomb. So uh, SI unit of electric potential is joule per Coulomb. And this joule per Coulomb itself is called volt because uh, Alessandro Volta invented the uh, shell. So in respect of him, uh, a unit joule per Coulomb is now known as volt and is abbreviated as V. So one volt of electric potential means uh, if one joule of work is done in bringing unit positive charge from infinity to certain point, then potential at that point is said to be one volt. <coughs> now, the potential at a point in electric field is called one volt that I have already described that uh, when one joule of work is done in moving one column of charge from infinity to that point. So uh, this was all about electric potential. Uh, I don't need to explain much more in this regard because you have already gone through in class 10. So now we will treat it in a little bit different way. Uh, we will use another mathematical method, integral method to evaluate electric potential. <clears throat> uh, after uh, uh, knowing uh, potential and discuss about potential, now we have to deal with another uh, potential difference. We have to now define potential difference, electric potential difference. There is no much more differences because uh, in order to define potential, we need to specify two points. One point where potential is to be determined. One point from where electric charge is to be proud, where electric potential is to be zero. That will be our starting point. And where uh, their uh, electric potential is non-zero, that will be the concerned point where we want to determine electric potential. So two points in the previous section, in the previous case that I have already discussed right now, one point is at infinity and another point is at uh, near about a source charge or in the field of source charge. So two point is even here. So even here we can say that potential difference that is potential at infinity and potential at a point in the given field. So difference between that is called potential difference. So when we call, uh, when we talk about potential uh, you must not uh, get confused that potential is different from potential difference. That is also potential difference. But difference is that uh, it is the potential difference between the potential at infinity and potential at a point. Now we are going to discuss about potential difference between two points. Neither of the points are at infinity. Both of the points are in the vicinity of the source charge in the vicinity of the source charge that is near about the source charge or in the field of source charge. In this case, a unit positive charge is to be moved from one point to another point in the vicinity of source charge or in the vicinity of electric field. Then amount of work done in moving unit positive charge from point A to point B in the given field and neither of the point A or B uh, at infinity. Only difference is that in this case, both the points are situated at a, uh, near about the source charge uh, and not at infinity. But in previous case, it was essential that one of the point must be at infinity and other point must be near about the source charge. So amount of work done in bringing unit positive charge from infinity to point near the source charge uh, will get converted into potential and uh, and this potential will be associated with the field to that point. 
<clears throat> so we have to discuss now electric potential difference. And now try to understand electric potential difference. We have to discuss right now. Now, if we take two points in the vicinity of field, say point A and point B, near the source charge capital Q, which is fixed at it uh, in the space. So now, if a discharge Q naught is to be brought from infinity to point A, then work done per unit charge is just equal to V A equal to uh, W A divided by Q naught. And this will be called as a potential associated with point A in the argument field. Similarly, the test charge when brought to point B, the amount of work done per unit charge, when brought from infinity to the point P, uh, point B, then amount of work done per unit charge is called potential FB. And this is denoted by VB and VB equal to WB upon Q naught. So now we have potential at two points, V A and V B. So potential difference will be expressed as difference between two points, difference between potential uh, 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 between two points. So uh, consider here, if W A is the work done by an external force in moving a positive test charge Q from infinity to point A in the given field, then potential at A will be V A equal to W A upon Q naught. Say this is equation one. Now, if W B is the work done in uh, moving a unit positive charge, which unit uh, moving positive test charge Q naught by external force from infinity to point B, then potential at B will be given as V B equal to W B upon Q naught. Now, so difference, potential difference between point A and B is given as the amount of work done in moving unit positive charge from point A to point B. So if Q naught is the charge that is moved from point A to point B, and so work done is given as WB minus WA in moving point a charge Q naught from A to B. So work done per unit charge is given as uh, WB minus WA divided by Q naught. So WB minus WA here, remember this is WB, you, you should not write WB here. This is WA, that is work done per unit charge uh, from a to B, so this is work done per unit charge at B, and this is work done per unit charge at A. So difference between the work done per unit charge between A and B is just equal to potential difference between point A and B in the vicinity of electric field of the source charge. So potential difference between two points is numerically equal to the work done in moving a unit positive charge from one point to another point that you have uh, already uh, studied in class 10. So now uh, we uh, discuss in the more detail that you know, we uh, that you could have not studied in class 10. So now let us uh, integral or calculus method to describe. So look at this is the actual picture that you have to study right now. That was the uh, introduction to you for that one uh, because uh, and, uh, while teaching physics or any subject we have to follow the philosophy that always we move from known to unknown so uh, by now potential and potential difference was known to you now the next step that we are going to take this is unknown to you so that we have to decide let us consider this is the region of a space in which Electric field line is shown. Electric field lines are shown in the figure. Say these are the field lines in the region of space. 
and each field lines are equally spaced from one another and but not necessary that it must be equally spaced it may be uh, non uniform as well but uh, mathematical relation will be true so now consider electric field shown by the line of force field line shown in the figure because uh, electric field itself is not visible so we uh, pict pictorially uh, we uh, represent electric field uh, with the help of field lines so this is the field lines in this region indicating that there is a presence of electric field and its source charge must be somewhere else now in this field we take two points a and b because i have already told you that if there is no field present in the space we cannot talk about electric potential if field is present only then we can talk about the potential so electric potential at any point in the given field is due to presence of field of source charge so it is essential that in the region of a space where we uh, try to determine electric potential we must understand that there must be some sources of electric field and due to that one there will be electric potential as we change the configuration or position of the test charge from that source charge so here <coughs> we don't uh, need to look at uh, uh, where is source charge just we have to need two points located in the region of field so uh, say point a and b now uh, test charge q naught is moved from a to b taking the path like this as electric field is a conservative field just like gravitational field so while moving in the conservative field uh, between any two points it does not matter that which path we follow it only matters that uh, uh, position initial position and final positions so similarly here between point a and b we can follow various path going here to here going in this way from here to here and going direct straight from a to b in all the paths along all the path amount of work done will remain same this is the nature of conservative force because uh, in case of conservative field uh, if charge is uh, or a body is moved from one point to another point uh, the movement of body along the path it becomes immaterial only it uh, uh, depends on uh, initial and final position of the uh, body so here initially test charge q not is at a now it is brought to point b so uh, uh, what will be change in energy of the charge test charge q naught or say if test charge q naught is brought from a to b and released uh, at b what will happen the test charge will follow the same path and come to a or it will uh, follow another path and will go elsewhere what do you th think about that this is the question try to understand if a test charge q naught is brought uh, by applying external force uh, from a to b against electrical uh, force and it is and it's released from uh, at b then that test charge will remain at b will move towards a or will move uh, to infinity or will move uh, elsewhere so uh, ponder about that now think <coughs> while moving uh, from a to b we take a small elementary length say dl and make this elementary length as a displacement because a small length on curved line will be treated as a straight line so this will be treated as displacement because it is a straight line 
and in uh, that's why it will have direction in this way tangent to this point dl is a vector this is displacement vector and electric field is directed at any point on the field line is directed along the tangent so electric field is directed in this way. now try to understand so how much force will discharge experience here so force will be nothing but equal to q naught into electric field because electric field at this point is q naught uh, electric field at this point is e capital e add discharge q naught is here so it will experience a repulsive force uh, equal to uh, q naught into electric field e so now work done by this electrical force in displacing the object through a displacement dl is given as a scalar product of force and displacement so remember here dl is the small length or element of the path elementary length we can say or differential length so work done in moving a test charge q naught through a small displacement dl on this path by the application of external force is given as say this is external force f and this is a small displacement dl so dot product of this force and dl equal to work done but external force must be equal to uh, electric uh, electrical force and opposite in direction which your electrical force will uh, uh, tends to take the test charge along this direction but external force is applied in this direction to take to this point so work done will uh, this force will be negative of magnitude of electric force electric force is given as uh, q naught into e so external force is given as minus q naught into e now work done is equal to minus q naught into e vector e dot dl now we have to know about what is the angle between vector b and dl uh, so here we have to calculate potential difference over the length dl uh, dividing lhs by q naught dividing lhs by q naught we get work done per unit charge so work done per unit charge is just equal to minus e dot dl and work done per unit charge is called uh, potential and as work done is dv so potential is denoted by dv uh, dw so potential is denoted by dv because work done per unit charge work is dv so potential must be uh, work that work is dw so potential must be dv so potential difference is just equal to a scalar product negative of a scalar product of electric field and displacement vector dl now in order to move the test charge q naught uh, from point a to b uh, we integrate this elementary work done or elementary potential and uh, uh, integrating uh, taking the point from A to B and then we get electric potential difference between A and B and uh, similarly we can generalize so this is the region uh, here point A to B so in another way we can say that electric potential is defined as electric potential difference between any two point is defined as the line integral of electric field under the limit of position vector of the point A and point B. Now, if we take A at infinity and B at any point in the given field, then electric potential is expressed as electric potential at b is expressed as because a is at infinity so at a potential is zero because at infinity electric potential becomes zero so if point a is at infinity then electric potential at b will be given as your limit becomes as a is at infinity so you just write here infinity 
and B will be at somewhere say R B. In this case, say R A and this case R B and uh, here R A equal to infinity and R B equal to R B. So we can take that one. So now try to understand. So expression gives the potential at point B. Now electric potential due to a point charge. जैसे हमने पहले पढ़ाया था electric potential due to electric field due to point charge. तो आप हम चलेंगे electric potential due to a point charge. Single point charge we take. So uh, say a point charge is situated at this point and is fixed. And we take a point R, uh, a point P at a distance R from this discharge, uh, this fixed charge. And here at this point we have to calculate electric potential. Or even we can say that it is a relation between electric field and electric potential. So we will discuss it right now. Now work done to displace unit positive charge through a small distance dx against electric field in the direction against the electric field. Say this charge is fixed here. So its field will be directed in this direction. And now test charge is brought from infinity in this direction. In this direction. So work has to be done. So we say we take a small amount of work done in dis displacing the test charge from A to B through a displacement dx is uh, given as dw equal to uh, minus f into dx. Uh, uh, here is uh, something uh, wrong because here we must write here F because force into displacement equal to dW. Otherwise, you must multiply Q naught, Q naught into E into dx equal to dW. So here Q naught uh, uh, by mistake uh, left over, so you must write here Q naught. Then it, this equation will be right, and he, he, even here also. And as well as you must write here negative sign because displacement is directed in this direction. So now at point A, electric field is given as KQ by R squared. So here R is X because uh, a point A is situated at a distance of X from charge Q. So electric field at that point is kq by x square. So now work done is given as uh, this one and then we write then we equate from where to where say from infinity to point p. So point P, position vector of point P from the charge Q is R. So we can say X will vary from infinity to X equal to R. So we get, after integrating this quantity, we get V equal to 1 by 4 by epsilon naught Q by R, R not a square. Because electric field was depending on the distance as inverse of a square, but here potential will depend as inverse of uh, uh, distance. So where, uh, and, uh, in case of electric field, we got expression, in case of electric field, uh, expression was E equal to KQ by R square, but here in case of potential, V equal to KQ by R. So when you plot the graph between electric field and position vector R, and at the same graph, you plot the graph between electric potential and R, then you will see that a graph representing electric field will be more stable than graph representing electric potential because there is variation. Now, question here uh, electric potential at a point due to group of charge. So far, we have discussed about electric potential due to point charge. Now, uh, here electric potential due to group of charges. So, as we have 
learned superposition principle in case of electric field. Here we will learn about the uh, same formula that electric potential at any point in the space due to system of charge is just equal to algebraic sum of is just equal to algebraic sum of potential due to individual charges. So here say we have two charges q q1 and q2 and at point p we have to calculate electric potential so point p is situated at a distance or position of r1 from the charge q1 and at a position of r2 from charge q2 therefore uh, electric potential at point p will be just equal to algebraic sum of potential at p due to charge q1 and potential at P due to charge Q2. So V equal to V1 plus V2. So potential at P due to Q1 will be KQ1 upon R1 and potential at Q, Q2 uh, at P due to Q2 will be uh, KQ2 upon R, R2. So this is the things. Now we, we can take uh, one by four pi epsilon note uh, as common or this is called K. So even we can write K into uh, Q1 upon R1 plus uh, Q2 upon R2. So since potential is a scalar quantity, so potential at a point will be the same in all the above cases. Now try to understand here, orientation of position vector does not matter the value of uh, potential because potential is a scalar. So if you, uh, uh, rotate the charge Q, keeping the position vector R2 same, electric potential will not change. Because electric potential is a scalar quantity, so it does not depend on orientation. Even in this case, look at, uh, uh, the configuration appears to be changing. Uh, still, electric potential will remain same because position vector between the two charges uh, remains same, R1 and R2. So if their orientation is anything, no matters. Because electric potential is a scalar quantity. If R1 and R2 is changed, then electric potential will change. Or Q1 or Q2 is changed, then electric potential will change. Even in this case, if Q2 is placed at this location and Q1 is placed at this location, still electric potential will remain same. Now, uh, so this was the case. So next thing, uh, we have to calculate electric dipole, electric electric dipole that we have already discussed. Now we have to calculate electric potential due to dipole. So don't need to discuss electric dipole. Now electric potential due to dipole we have to discuss here. So here uh, remember the dipole is the system of equal and opposite charges. Here is negative charge and here is positive charge. And this is the center of dipole and at point p we have to determine electric potential due to these charges so the same situation will be applied here as in previous case v equal to v1 plus v2 only difference will be that here q1 is negative and q2 is positive equal and opposite and their position vector r1 and r2 is written so now try to understand here uh, a resultant potential is obtained here uh, taking uh, common 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught and Q is taken common so we have in bracket 1 by R1 minus 1 by R2. Say this is the equation 1. Now we have to determine R1 and R2 in terms of this R. How can you apply? you can apply using cosine rule a triangle law of cosine rule you could have studied in trigonometry in class 11 that is a b c a small a b c is the side of a triangle then we can write here a square uh, a square plus b square or uh, minus uh, 2 a b cos theta equal to c square so that formula we can apply here say a distance between uh, o to positive charges uh, 
uh, you can even take 2a d here is d so even you can take 2a so from here to here a and from here to here a in that situation or in this case figure is uh, in figure it is given d so you can take half of d from here to here so in this triangle o p 